I was born on the 26th October 1985 into a traditional family with my parents busy building their careers. Seldom having time with them, most of my childhood was spent with my grandparents. My grandpa would always tell me that his stories during the Japanese war, the glorious day when he was head of the village. Being a grandma's girl, she would never fail to find other ways to entertain me. As a young five-year-old lass, I would wake up myself to get ready to attend Little Bell Kindergarten. At times, I became my parents' alarm clock would be my right to kindergarten. There was once when I missed the bus and I walked myself home at the age of five years old. Other kids would have cried, but I decided to find my own way home. My parents were definitely shocked, slightly breathless, and were on the verge of having a heart attack. Artistic things like drawings, ballet, piano were my favourites. Hence, uh, on the weekend, there were classes to attend. However, I disliked doing my homework or practising. Time passed really fast, but the games and nightmares have only really started during my primary school years. SRJKC Pui Chai was my primary school. Chinese schools are really strict in Malaysia. Back then, students were required to carry up to 5 kilograms of books for classes. It was the most popular weight training exercise in the past. To add on to that, there were three times the amount of homework compared to other schools. This was mostly due to the subjects being in three languages, English, Malay and Chinese. Public training was still popular then. It was a military training ground for small kids. It was definitely not enjoyable to prepare myself to be scolded and caned on a daily basis. Due to the stress, my drawing and ballet classes were forgotten. But I still attended my piano class. Honestly, I was actually too lazy to practice for all the classes. My weight and my position in class increase almost every year. Certainly not the two best things to increase in tandem. By the age of 10, I was the biggest sized female in my class. Thus, I was nicknamed Godzilla. While my memory got worse, my ability to understand was not good either. Often being bullied, I did not dare to speak to anyone. I routinely cry alone in my room due to these circumstances. I was the crying Godzilla who blamed the whole world for not understanding her and it became one of the darkest moments in my life. My parents eventually gave up on pushing me. Having no idea on how to escape from this, I gave in to my own destiny and fate as being dumb and fat. My homework was most often incomplete, coupled with the lies I told my teachers and parents as an excuse to cover up what actually happened. However, at the age of 10, something changed my life. I forgot to bring my textbook to class and I was punished with ear pulling while doing squats for a hundred times. Upon completion, my legs were solid due to my weight. Yep, I was 55 kilograms when I was just 145 centimeter tall, not being able to walk for a week. My grandparents were so worried about me that they both accompanied me to the clinic even though my grandpa was ill and undergoing cancer treatment at that time. It was already night time when we reached the clinic and my grandfather accidentally fell into a drain and ended up needing stitches. My family started blaming each other for the incident. Feeling so terribly sorry for everything, this incident woke me up. It became a firm statement within myself to not to come back to this low point ever in my life. During the recovery period of my swollen legs, as I could not even move around anyways, I locked myself up and started to study. To do well, I knew that I have to put in 10 times more efforts compared to the others to gain the same results. Banning myself from the TV, my brain was slow at first, but it picked up. It worked, and my marks jumped from being at the bottom to the top. This is show that a Godzilla can excel in studies with extra hard work put in.
However, due to the vast improvements, I became arrogant and selfish. Most of the information were kept to myself while complacency kicked in. Being overconfident with my studies, my grades dropped tremendously in standard five. As the cherry on top of the cake, I lost all my friends. This was another wake-up call before the panic for the final exams for primary school, UPSR, kick in. During Standard 6, it was the time to work extra hard and I learned to be humble. Having the whole humble pie to myself, studying was always on the clock while I gave my best throughout the year. The night before heading to school to take my UPSR results, a nightmare struck me. I got no A's in my dream. I reached my school, shivering and nail-biting, accompanied by my mum. To the greatest joy of my mum, I scored straight A's. She teared up while I beamed with joy. It was a rocky one at first, but at least primary school ended nicely.